Nigerians, not Africans. Nigerians in the U.S. Hmm? Take your vacation. Take your vacation. So far, not tire you. You are the only employee who does not go for vacation. Even if you're not going on an actual vacation, put in your time and stay at home. Don't go to work. Stay at home. They're looking for who to come in on the weekends and you're showing up. You're high. Do you have a life? You're showing them you don't have a work-life balance. You're actually showing them you don't have a life. You think it's loyalty, hard work. You're just a zuzu. A zuzu, no a zuzu. Zuzu, no, no. You think by doing it, you're going to make people like me feel bad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I will take my vacation even if I don't go anywhere, even if I stay indoors. Eh? I'm not going to work. There's a government declared holiday. Others are at home. You're going to volunteer at work for double prompt. Defender of the universe. Alpha and Omega. Uzu, strong man, big boy, hard man. My friend, come on, go and take your sick leave. Why do you think it's there in the first place? Tomorrow you say you're being overworked. Take your sick leave. Take your vacation. If they ask you, tell them you're traveling to Nigeria. You already know Nigeria. Just tell them one story. You've been to Nigeria before. It's not a lie. Tell them one story of what happened one time when you were in Nigeria. Practically, you're not lying. You want to go to work. Hard worker. Double pay that IRS will take from your W-2 form. You didn't know, Abby? Oh, you did not know. Eh, keep working double. Extra time. <laughs> Your extra time is still taxed. It's not free. Work-life balance refers to the level of prioritization between personal and professional activities in an individual's life and to the level to which activities related to their job are present in the home. The ideal work-life balance is open to discussion. Free thinker Paul Krasner said that anthropologists often define happiness as having little or no differentiation between an individual's professional and personal lives. Huh. Nigerians are very industrious people and naturally hard workers and Nigerians in diaspora work even harder but working at the risk of your personal life is never the way to go so today we're asking the Nigerians home and abroad have work-life balance please let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us sms or whatsapp to 0818038 or twitter to us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag WayshowAfrica1 let me ask you ladies first of all, do you think that Nigerians home and abroad? I it's I believe that it's actually a very a different ball game abroad, right? Because okay. I'm assuming that they have a lot of bills to pay. When they work overtime, they actually get paid for it. So they might want to do that so that they can earn some extra cash. They can earn some cool cash and that's why they will not want to take their vacations or take their sick leaves and all of that. But do you think that, um, or let me ask it this way, do you think it's necessary, or what, what, what are your views actually <laughs> on this work-life balance matter in Nigeria and in the diaspora as well? NJ. <laughs> I, um, I don't think there's anything like work-life balance in terms of, in Nigeria. Uh. I think that work-life balance means what, how important your life means to you, uh. and that's the balance in your life. So it depends on how you see it. If you're constantly on a money roll, yeah. like you're constantly chasing money, mm -hmm. something in your life, some part of your life will have to suffer for it. Mm -hmm. And that's where you see people lose out on maybe birthdays, births, you know, and gatherings and relationships and things like that. Um, and I think it's very, very important for us to have work-life balance because um, your job will never take you to the best restaurant. Your mm -hmm. job will never be the one to take care of your kids. Your job is not going to be the one to love your spouse. So your job is not going to be there to massage your back. So I think it's very, very important for you to always find the balance. It's very, mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Isi? Oh, for me, I, my perspective is kind of broad. I'm looking at it from the perspective of black tax. And I'm also looking at it from the perspective of location. Now, where let me take black tax for first. Black tax is something that we all have in Nigeria. We, we are used to it. It is something that we go through daily. 
our loved ones will ask us for money, even those of us in Nigeria, not to talk of those that are abroad. So mm -hmm. they would always ask for these monies to be able to, you know, um, find the cushion. Now, when they do this, they're putting the pressure on those who are abroad or who are working. And those of us that are working would feel the pressure and the need to take care of those that do not have. So yes, when we see things like that and we can earn an extra box, yes, we will definitely go for it. We wouldn't think about the fact that they're going to take some sort of tax for it or not. You know, we are like that. And another thing is um, the way we are wired in Nigeria. We are wired in such a way that we are hard workers. We do not understand where to draw the line, where we should you know, take a step back and take a chill pill. We don't know how to do that. So we always want to keep going and keep making money, just like NJ said. You just have to keep pushing and keep looking for ways to make ends meet, not to talk of the economic crunch we are all facing currently. So everybody is on the move and trying to make ends meet. Nobody, I can bet you nobody's thinking about um, work-life balance right now because of the state of the economy currently. And secondly, Location is another thing I talked about earlier. Where we have location, for example, we are based in Lagos, an urban city, a, a town where everybody is, you know, on the move. It's like a rat race. We want a situation whereby we make money. And if we don't want money, we won't be in Lagos. We'll be at home or in our villages, basically. So we are in Lagos to make money. We didn't come to, <laughs> there's a saying, we didn't come to look at the bridges. So because of this, we tend to try to make ends meet in whatever capacity, in whatever way we can do it. So location in Lagos. There is no way you can have a work-life balance. Work-life balance is practically non-existent because you can go to 10 places or, two, I'm saying 10 places, no way. You can go to two places at once in Lagos because of the, of the environment, is there's a lot of buzz everywhere, hmm. traffic and all that that goes with it. So we have to take that pause and if we have to be intentional about this, we have to take that pause. But again, if we were fa if had found ourselves in the rural areas where life is easy, in quote, in quote, because in some rural areas, like for example, on Nicha, for example, they do not have work-life balance because they are all about money. Even if they go to a party, is to collect money. So there is nothing about taking a chill pill there. But if you go to a typical rural area where they have, uh, they, they go to the farm and stuff like that, in the north, for example, I'm sure they do have that work-life balance in place for them. So again, I will state it that it is about location and it is about black tax and it is about the individuals who are Nigerians. Thank you. Very well said, Isi. Thank you. I like the angle that you have brought it from. And I'll, I'll come back to that, but let's hear from Mary. Do Nigerians home and abroad have work life balance? No, I don't think so. Um, I think we come from a mentality of, um, is it fight or flight? Like, we're just always on the edge. And I'll take myself for example. I haven't gone on leave in the past, we're in the eight month now. And even to take the leave, I still feel like, oh, if I'm not traveling, is there really any need? Do you understand? It's, it's almost like I'm even scared to take the leave. And then, you know, people around me, I don't, I've, at this, I've worked in maybe two organizations or so. There's never any you know, even prompt from the company to say, okay, you've not taken your annual leave. It doesn't concern them. You have to actually be working, you know, 24-7. I have colleagues or friends that are abroad and we're all on the move for something. Yes, there's a rise 
about mental health talk, which has really helped us. And like today is vlogging day. So when you see someone vlog about a trip, you're like, oh, okay, you know what? I can do this. I haven't gone on a vacation by myself, you know. And because every time I bring it up to my mom, it's like, when you are married with your children, that's when you do those things, you know. So, <laughs> you know, so there's that, that mentality of, you know, it's supposed to be so a you family. Like this now, you just and, want to travel. And do you understand? Like, you just want to, you just want to travel. Or you know, if if you say you're taking leave, it's like, well, what are you going to go and sit down at home and do? You know, after the second day, you'll be tired. You know, we just don't, as a community, as Nigerians, I don't think we have come to that place where we understand that there's something called Downtown. burnout. You do you understand? You can actually be mentally and physically exhausted mm. so oftentimes when you bring this up the, what you hear is you are lazy you're lazy mm. you're lazy do you understand so everybody is always in in a hurry you know there's sometimes that i i get into the car and i'm driving and i'm wondering where exactly are you hurrying? like where are you rushing to you know it's different when you see somebody else in front of you trying to overtake you're like where are you rushing to until you're actually the person doing it and you're just wondering like you're just always you know hey would there be traffic? Let me let me go. Mm -hmm. Let me. You, you're just always in survival mode. Yeah. Survival mode, always. Like, um, work-life balance for Nigerians is a no. Is a no. We're not there yet. Yeah. I'm hoping that we'll get there. But I mean, it's it's really very very sad. And the older generation, I think they are also getting to understand now that ah, okay, you know. People go on vacation, you know, they travel, you know, sometimes you can just want to sit down at home. Mm -hmm. But it's still very strange because I can tell you, I've, I've been saying, I need to go and leave, I need to go and leave. Two weeks has passed, I need to go and leave. Okay, just write the email and, and I'm just thinking, hmm, is it necessary? What if I go home and I'm not doing anything? And then, what if you go home and you're not doing anything? That's fine too. <laughs> if you're mentally exhausted, you're mentally exhausted. Like, Definitely. you can't even speak up for it because yeah. you don't want to seem like, you know, you're being lazy, you're not um, hard-working kind of thing. Can't you see the economy? If you spend this money now, what are, where are you going to start from? Oh, mm. People are slumping and dying. Of what use is it? Mm. Mm. Of what use is it, actually? So, um, for me, we don't have it. We don't have the culture. It would be nice to have. Me too, I'm learning to have it, but that's my two cents so far. <laughs> Oh, very true. well said, me. That's <laughs> actually very true. And again, I would address what you said and what you see, the angles of the three of you have actually come. If you're just tuned in into our Ladies' Night Out and we are discussing the topic, do Nigerians home and abroad have work life balance? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You could also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag. We show. Also, our phone line is now open. Please call us on 0702500749. The number to call again is 0702500749. So I said I was going to come back to what you guys said, right? So um, you see, it came from the angle of oh, black tax, you know, and that thing is very true. The minute family knows what it is that. Mm. You earn what is that comes into pressure becomes worse, mm. and you can't afford to disappoint now. Do you want them to call you tomorrow and say we need to naira to do X Y Z, and then you can't afford it? They're not looking at you like you are just working. You are not even so that pressure, like you rightly said, that pressure to succeed, it is in us. The drive is a good thing, but most times we don't even realize that we need to get to that point where we just have to understand that there's something called rest. Yeah. There's something, like you said, you've been wanting to go on this leave. Also. But guess what? If you fall ill tomorrow, what's going to happen? You're going to sit at home. You won't go anywhere. So that leave is actually very, very important. But you know another thing I have realized? It's the fact that even the, the work system, or would I say the work culture, doesn't even support doesn't it. Even support it. Yeah. Do you understand? I was saying to NJ today that I started a new job today. <laughs> and our closing time is supposed to be 3.30, which is very weird for me mm. and so i went to the, i was actually shadowing someone right mm. and then at about 3 25 i stood up to go to the bathroom and i took pictures and blah blah, blah in the bathroom and i came back at 3 30. everybody is still business as usual which business as usual my business. office was empty oh wow 
I didn't see anybody. I looked, I'm like, and then I saw my lamb and she's like, Chino, why are you still here? It's time to go. I'm like, it's time to go. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. gone. It actually feels very weird, right? My goodness, I experienced what culture shock. I was like, no, this is not happening. Same thing happened to me. First week, my first week at work, I was locked inside the office. <laughs> and it was 6 p.m. I was coming from, I used to work on the mainland. Mm. And I used to work a... Uh, like a nine to nine, mm -hmm. because my first day of work, I closed at 8.30 p.m. <laughs> from the mainland, and it continued like that for five years. In five years, I had five days leave, mm. so one for each year. What the hell? So, and then I got here, and first week, I was trying to catch up, you know, do a lot of catch up. I'm going to be, you know, managing the team, I wanted to know, you know, you wanted to know everything that needed to be known. And I was just working, and I just looked up. Oh, it's dark outside. Oh, let me get going. I looked at the time, about 6 o'clock. Mm. My colleagues had left, I think, about 4.30. And I came out, you know, packed my things, put off all the lights, went downstairs. Door was locked. I was like, wait, wait, wait. I went to the kitchen. Everywhere, I was locked inside the office. I had to call my boss. Sir, um, do they lock the door? <laughs> because I think I've been locked inside the office. He had to call the security who had gone to his room. He thought no, everyone had left. He was used to everyone of leaving. Of course. So it was there after. Now he knows that, okay, I work late. So he tends to, you know, keep it. But yeah, I was Decades. locked in the office first week. So it's, there's a lot of culture shock. Honestly, yeah. there's, because I, I, I will not lie. See, see like, I, I, in fact, for the rest of today, I haven't stopped talking about it. <laughs> because I have, I'm coming from different places hmm. where, we're supposed to close at maybe 5 or 4 or 5.30, whatever the case is. Yeah. But we literally have to wait for one person to stand up first before the rest oh, of us right, right, right. Okay. So everybody's always waiting to see, okay, who is the first person that's going to get Yeah, up? who's going to have the, you know, the Gary courage the to... bold person that would yeah. say, for this one, everybody, including my line manager, she had packed her food bag, packed her handbag, closed, shut her laptop. She was ready to go at 3.30. So it's not a case of... Oh, we will want to see stuff ahead. Who can walk the most? Yeah. Who is, nobody yeah. cares about that. And that's how it should be. I, because in your letter, I, there is a time stipulated from this time to this time. Go home, get, do other things. Take care of your family, you know? You see, you see you're going to say something. Yes. I, I was going to say that with the advent of COVID, we actually decided to do a, a change. There was some sort of change that happened just with workforces. Mm. What am I trying to say? When people work from home, to a large extent, they were able to have that work-life balance. So they were able to, you know, work from home and at the same time tend to be family and at the same time do other things that they needed to do instead of being stuck in traffic for quite some time before they get home and all that. So yes, I would say that um, the, the, the employers or most employers before COVID, they were not understanding at all yeah. to a large extent. They didn't help the, the workforce to, you know, have that balance or have that work-life balance, basically. But right now, with, I, I sincerely apologize to my Gen Zs, you know, with total respect to you. In fact, I duff my heart to you. Look, what a friend of mine told me was that the Gen Z's, they don't take nonsense. Once they walk into the office and they are telling them nonsense, they walk away and tell them, I don't have time for this, and they walk out. You know? So I think that also helps. I don't think I'm a Gen Z again. No. <laughs> I think I'm a, that also, I'm, I'm a to a large extent, helped the, 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 the employers to understand that, look, you can't enslave people. You have to be tolerant. You have to listen to what the people are saying. And help them have that work-life balance in place. Mm. Thank you, Isi. It's so also still speaking to employers as well. I think another thing is, so let's even talk about family now. Considering things like maternity leave, paternity leave, yeah. I've realized that most organizations don't even get the concept of paternity leave. I, I was reading an article, and um, <laughs> even this so-called America I was talking about, you know America is ranked as one of the unhappiest countries. If you look at the Nordics, so we are talking about countries like Scandinavia, Luxembourg, and all those yeah, countries that yeah. are in, in like the countryside and all of that. Those ones, by the time you see a mother is a father is entitled to what fifty-two weeks, 
some 28 weeks. That's what, seven months. And That's a father. Even, yeah, Paid leave. So imagine that kind of situation. Do you want to come and try it in Nigeria? It's not possible. So that's why when we now even go and start living in diaspora, we're not even able to still follow up with that culture because it's very unusual to us. Yeah, it's it, too much time. What, you just want to sit down for house. They do it. In, they carry picking. It's too much. It doesn't make sense. When you go, after three months, get your ass up and go and walk now. You, you know? So I, think, I strongly believe that um, the, the employers have a very, very big role to play in helping to improve work-life balance. The other day, we were talking about doing things, when we, we had the show on wellness, mm -hmm. we are talking about things like break, you know, um, having allowing employees actually um, exercise their break times. Some people sit right there with their, in front of their computer. <laughs> you are one of them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm actually not even sitting in front of the computer. Mm -hmm. I'm expected to make five physical visits to companies. And the day I actually tried it, it's freaking exhausting. And also make phone calls. I, start, I, I went back home and I sat down and I said, I think something is actually wrong. Like, this cannot be my life. I live close to the office, so that helps me to get home in, like, what, 15 minutes. Yeah. Imagine if I had to do an extra one hour on the road. Yes, and guess what? They're still sending you messages. They're still sending you emails. I sat down there for a day and I looked. I said, you know what? If heaven wants to fall, heaven should fall. That's Boy, the Gen Z. See, that's the Gen Z. That's the Gen Z. <laughs> I refuse to be a millennial. They if that heaven out. wants to fall, let it fall. This report, I'm not sending it. And let me see what's going to happen. Because it's actually absurd. Yeah. And it take, let me tell you how it takes a toll on my mental health. It's the fact that you begin to actually doubt yourself. Because you're thinking, if somebody actually sets this thing, eh, mm -hmm. it means that the person mm -hmm. believes that it's a possible. human yeah, being it, it can, can do it. it. So if, if the employer believes that you can do it, why am I not able to do it? Is it because I do not feel like doing it? Mm. Or is it because I'm lazy? And lazy eh, is a word... The, the title of my book, I've concluded, is going to be The Lazy Way Out. That's going to be the title of my book when I write a book. Because I think I've heard the word lazy so much. And even being a Gen Z, it's, just, it's now a natural term. Oh, you guys, your generation, you guys are lazy. You guys don't, you don't, you don't want to put in the work. You need to put in the work. And I'm just like, Shay, if I put in the work now and I die before I reap the, the fruit of my labor, of what, what, what have I achieved, really? What I mean, really have speaking, I achieved? Speaking to that, That's a strong actually, point, though. I, you know, speaking to it's, that, I, I think that, Another thing is, um, that's why I must really applaud the tech companies because those guys understand the concept of work life. They have game rooms they, that you can you just think even so, out. I don't think it's all of them. Okay, but, um, but most yes, of them, uh, a most good of them. group. The well, one, yeah. Especially the ones owned by the young generation, the younger generation, okay. right? Yes. And I say okay. this because okay, yes. Yes. they understand that times have changed. Yeah. It's no longer you now work in, you work in a bank. You leave your house at 5 a.m. Because that's what our parents were you are used to. That's for them. That for those of them that are still in service. Mm. If you leave the house at 5 o'clock, they get to the office at what? Maybe 6.30. Or sometimes they leave, when they leave that early, they, they are able to get to work a lot earlier. Yeah. They get to the office maybe 5.45, 6, thereabouts. They probably try to nap one hour. Work starts at 7. And they are at it, at it, at it, at it, at it. Till, sometimes they don't even leave the office till 9 p.m. Because they are waiting out traffic. So you now, you are saying that you want to leave the office at four. They are looking at you like, in my days, we used to leave the office at 9 p.m. I'm like, excuse me. My manager you. told me, she said, when I was actively doing sales, I used to make 70 calls in, 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 in a day. I say, ah, are you a machine? 70 phone calls in, in a day. When she means in a day, as in not at like the whole 24 hours, maybe mm. just like six hours of the day. Mm. So it means that we're not energetic, you mm. know, because we're all very young in my team, just three people. And in, we're all just looking like, hey, it's like we're going to die soon because <laughs> this work is actually going to kill us. Okay, but, uh, but then nobody is, as, as a Gen Z, yeah, I'm, I'm around so many millennials that even when I'm speaking among Jays, they are Mary, yeah, are you sure you are really a Gen Z? Because you are talking like an old woman. So, and nobody <laughs> wants to speak of Jonathan. Here, here, I, I'm the one saying that I can't even apply for my leave because I'm like, ah, 
you go at home and sit down and not do anything. But then it's 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 the mentality is bonkers. Well, I think we should. I, I was going to say something. Yes, yes I was going to say something in in respect of us being intentional. Okay, how do we bounce back from you know? finding that leverage or finding that level playing ground where we can actually do the work and at the same time have some fun and at the same time have a personal lifestyle, basically. We need to step um, away from the rat race, basically. And how do we do this? We need to be intentional about it. We need to be deliberate about it. We know that the economy is not friendly currently, but there are ways we can also go about it if we really want to. And for me, I think practically everything I do right now is online. I teach online. I, I do my courses online. I At the same time, I have time for the family and I'm able to do a thing or two outside the family. So. Yes, we need to be intentional about it. We need to find that level playing ground where we can we can breathe. <laughs> yeah, we should breathe. It, <laughs> I, I think we should be able to find that level playing ground where we can breathe and and be able to you know take the next step forward by um, easing out the stress we are all going through. If you are in sync with this thought, school of thought as well. I, I don't mind you. I, I definitely agree with what you have said, Isi, but as well as being intentional, I think you need an, an enabling environment, you know. So I'm, I'm pretty much intentional, which is going to the gym. Um, me, I will take out my own time. If the company won't give me the time, I would, you know, do it. But then it's, it would be nice to have a supporting environment. It would be nice to have you know, a, a system where I should be Orange able to say, oh, I, I'm like, my body is actually tired and I don't think I can come into work rather than, you know, looking for ways that I'm going to try and get a doctor's note just to say, I don't want to come into the office, you know, and there are times when there have been times when I want to close early from the office and I actually have tried to be honest. Do you understand where I say, Oh, yeah, I think I'm just really tired. I would just really like to close early, which is just maybe two hours away from my closing time. And what was I told? You don't have a substantial reason for this, so therefore your request is not granted. How, how else can I go about that? The only next intentional way would be to be lying around things. And I just I don't see the reason why we should yeah, have to lie yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. We shouldn't. I agree with you. See, my final thoughts uh, on this matter, I've learned that you can't have everything and do everything at the same Very time. True. Fair. Something has nice. to give, and you just have to decide what is going to give. Something mm -hmm. has to pay for something. Yeah. So you have to be able to plan and create that balance for yourself. Very true. Yeah. You see... I totally agree with NJ. Something has to give. You can serve two masters at the same time. So it's either you're for Jesus or you're for the money. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's, it's, it's important. But again, one needs to be deliberate about it and be intentional to scale through and strike that balance that they so need. It doesn't have to be equal, but it has to be prioritized and it has to make sense. Mm. I also strongly believe that there's a very strong opportunity. I understand that there are some industries or some roles that might not be able to adopt the flexible schedule um, option, right? The hybrid yeah. work system or the remote work system, you know. But at the same time, I would always still say, I feel like we need to start from the employers. Because just imagine an employer says to their employees okay so starting this week everybody works three times a week or even four times a week mm. you think your staff will say they don't want to they, they don't want it that's we left the group chat <laughs> it's not impossible it's not impossible because for example look at what you do people would say i used to work in business development right? and they would say oh as a business development i remember one time i told i asked one of my bosses i'm like 
why is it that we can't operate the hybrid system? Because I, I, I suggested it. You know how they will the meeting, they will lie to you and say, any suggestions? Your suggestions are always welcome. You can... I then opened my mouth, big mouth, and I said, uh, maybe we should consider working. <laughs> you see the bombastic side eye <laughs> that he gave me. And he's like, Chinelo, no, this is business development. And I can't even understand the other teams. But business development, what do you mean you want to work from home? How would you manage the sales guys? How would you manage the market? And I'm like, have you heard of social media? Are you telling me that we can't do social media from our houses? We can. We don't need to be. We're not going for physical visits every day. Or what strategy do am I trying to build that I need to sit down on this desk? I can't lie down on my bed to think about. You are the one that is just making these things seem like it is. I don't think there's, except it's like maybe those that are in active services, like maybe um, healthcare and things like that. Those ones I can understand. Uh, if, uh, but then there's even, sh there are shifts. There are rosters, right? You can actually operate systems like that just so that people are able to have time, not just to rest, to do other things with it. There's more to life than working. There's more to life than just waking up. That's what some people's every day is. Wake up, go to work, come back, sleep, wake up again, uh, rinse and repeat, you know. But that race. <laughs> I think a, we, need to start, we need to start from the employers. The employers need to actively pay more attention and do better. I understand that you're paying these people money and you're afraid. That when they stay at yeah. home, they will not work. Yeah, That's so, so, thing. so I was going to say that that mm -hmm. um, is it the fear of um, the fact that something can be taken for granted? Is would that be a good enough reason not to go for it? Because mm -hmm. you know, I know that my be. own generation, when I've I've heard the way some Gen Zs have showed some people, you know, shaggy, and I'm like, <laughs> ah, are you sure <laughs> this is really the way forward? You okay. know. So it's we very have nice. Let's take a call just before we wrap up the show. Okay. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Oh, okay. I think we lost that. We lost that oh, call. Okay. Unfortunately, okay. I was happy that we we're going to get a call. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I hope that the employers have seen this and they will see it. If they did not see it today. They will see it some other time. Amen. And we are like Isi rightly said ourselves as individuals. We also need to learn to be intentional yeah. as well. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, NJ. Thank you, EC. It was a great conversation. Thank but before you. we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. Never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Very important, and this is by Dolly Parton. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.